Hello, Kevin here. Where am I now? Well, I am actually outside of St Mary's Church in Fernhurst. They're here. Before anybody gets worried, they're here. <laughs> Cynthia and Steve, we're ready to do a walk round the church, which is behind Steve and Cynthia. So we're going to have a walk round. We've got a really lovely sunny day today, um, which is going to be great. Let me just give you a shot up towards the tower and then we'll start having a walk around the outside and we've already know the church is open because the warden, church warden has spoken to us so we'll go press on and have a look around the outside of the church. Well I'm at the west end of the church now. Of St. I said St Mary's just now, it's St Margaret's of course, silly me. There we go, St Margaret's, Parish Church of Fernhurst. So this is the west end, and I'm at the base of the, the Norman Tower. With a lovely clock face there. And the church is primarily built of stone. The um, church tower, or the spire, has got a, a shingled, a wood shingled uh, or shingles on the roof. A little tiny doorway there, look at that. And there's no real surround to it, it's just purely of the blocks that the church is built of, so there's no particular surround to it, unlike this church, this doorway here. And it's got all the lovely ironwork and stud work. We've got these beautiful irons here and the studs all over the door but they've got a surround on it stone surround and we've got these at the ends of the surrounds one there and one there and you can see where there may have been another door hung with the old hinges there either side so it would have been a double um, perhaps a netted uh, so now I'm round to the north side of the church you can see that the gullies for collecting the rainwater are all made or built of brick just to my left hand side we've got the the offices for the parish clerk here and a function room just there which can be rented out and let, let out so here's, this is the, as I say, this is the north side of the church and everything's been dug back and there may have been graves that were disturbed here at times when this work was going on. So I've climbed up some steps to this huge tree just to my, just in front of me. The gateway there to the old rectory. I have got some information which I, I will have to read out to you and it's since the, since the name Fernhurst is of Saxon derivation it is possible that Fernhurst had an earlier church. Well Fernhurst its original name was Farnhurst. The present building is of Norman origin, dating from within 50 years of the conquest. Uh, it was possibly built by a soldier of the, of the cross in gratitude for his safe return from the Crusades as implied by the church's dedication to St Margaret's of Antioch. So it'd be nice to get inside and have a look at this rather large tomb here, which is in case surrounded by these iron railings and no doubt as I walk around see some of the headstones I recognize some of the old villager names some more tombs here got a tiny little window just here which is at the east end of the church there's a lot of ground clearance going on at the moment. 
We've got this large yew tree just in front of me. I think see more stonework around the outside. And you've got a stone at the top of the window at 1826. now down on the south side of the church and the church is under a tiled roof I've got a little boiler room just in front of me here and even the the hopper heads from the downpipes have got dates of 1859 on them This has always been a very, very well kept church. And we've got the porch here on the south side. Now, when I went to Fernhurst Primary School, this was the church that we came into on regular visits. I'm just backing away on the footpath now. And you've got the, the metal cross there but this camera won't pick up those shingles very well, but they're extremely well worn, weathered, very badly weathered. Well, I'm just about to uh, head into the church now, but I just wanted to show you these doors with the ironwork on there and the rather lovely re-gilted um, gold work around there. This is the house of God and the gate to heaven so I'm inside this porch now which is um, all of stone and oak all the framework the timbers is all of oak with the leaded light windows you've got a lovely bench there and I'm just about to go into the church now and literally as I go through the door we've got this lovely old font in front of me built of stone with a lovely wooden top with some lovely ironwork on top but just over here there's lots of information and just in front of me is a replica of what the exact church would have looked like you've got the porch just there, which is exactly where I'm standing now. And we've got the addition of the extension there, but it is actually a lot older than what uh, is, is thought. But this information, which is gonna be very difficult to actually uh, get in the shot to read. And that was the gentleman that did the, the work there. And it's Ken Quinn. And I'm directly underneath the bell tower. I've got one single bell rope going up there. And I'm just about to walk back into the church itself now. I've got these lovely tie bars going across with the roof space in the roof space and from this bit here which has obviously been being utilized for other things this used to have pews in it um, as you can see it's got a wooden floor there and it um, all that really remains of the original buildings are the font and some of the tie beams and the majority of the north wall with its two lancet windows and that is the the north wall there a lovely modern tapestry hanging there. And we've got these stained glass windows. One is a beautifully done one there. It says to the glory of God, Fernhurst, born 1854, in the loving memory of 
Actually, I've, got, I've read that wrong. Let me do that again. To the glory of God and in the loving memory of Sir Felix Shooter. Uh, born of the Thirdly Place, Fernhurst, born 1854, died 1936. And of Meta, his wife, born 1860, died 1918. So I'm in the central aisle now, walking towards the east end. I've got the pulpit just to my left there. And above me is the cross with Christ on there. And we've got a piscina just in that corner there, just above that chair. All the walls have been painted, as you can see. In the fact, they've been done right throughout the church. But you can see these big tie beams going across. They're huge. And as I mentioned just now, these would be part of the original, the, the, la the only remaining tie beams of the original church. And we've got a vicar's pew here. Which is rather nice. And then a smaller one across this side. This uh, tapestry that I mentioned just now has been done by the teachers and pupils of the village school. And all the, the bits on the inside have been done by the children. It depicts a postman and a football team, cricket team, etc, uh, etc. Et then all the bits around the outside have been done by the teachers. And that's sort of depicting wildlife and birds and all sorts of things like that and flowers, which is lovely. So as you can see now, that's the organ pipes there. And the little organ, which is just here, just this bit here. And we've got these pews, which are the original pews going all the way down. You can see on the roof between the timbers that it's been rendered and painted as well. One thing I just wanted to show you is this rather lovely area here with these lovely, I don't know whether they're prints or or paintings, but they've got the light streaming through that window there, and it's a stained glass window. And it says Canterbury and Chichester at the bottom. But it was. Um, it is known that there was a wall painting um, in the chancel, but unfortunately the fragments were washed off inadvertently um, in 1914 when there was some redecoration done. But where there's crosses of, of Christ, you've got this huge arch of stone going round. And it's got a, obviously a large cross beam there. There are several different plaques uh, on the walls. And this is of the uh, vicars. And 
and this is in memory of all the the men from the village that fell in World War One, 1914, 19, 1919, and just there, William Ralph was um, an ancestor in my family. And a little bit earlier on, when we were um, to the west of the, the village, we, put, we walked past the house and I was telling Steve and Cynthia about um, William, where he lived at the house with his parents, Henry and Kate. So, um, St Margaret's Church, been very interesting. So much information for it that Steve had, had researched for me. It was just too hard to bring it all to you. Um, but I've done my best. So anyway, we finished here at St Margaret's of Furness for now. And we're going to head off. So this will be Kevin, Cynthia and Steve saying bye-bye. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to follow, like and subscribe to Kevin's Rambles.